The potential of nuclear fusion is beyond anything that anyone can imagine. It has the capacity to provide energy to celestial bodies like the stars. If experts can replicate it on Earth, nuclear fusion has the potential to supply essentially endless energy with zero emissions of carbon dioxide. In addition, unlike the nuclear technology that is now in use, nuclear fusion does not generate dangerous long-term radioactive waste. Throughout the years, it seemed as if the technology would never come within reach. Nevertheless, the payoff is so enormous that billions of dollars are still being invested in the sector. However, Germany's most prominent plasma research center has just established a new threshold by building a nuclear fusion reactor. This shows that we are getting closer to the brilliant goal of fusion power, which is an essentially unlimited supply of purely renewable energy. Welcome to Technology Zone, where the home of technology resides. Join us as we discover the answers to questions most people think of. What precisely is this brand new fusion nuclear reactor? What effect does it have exactly? Also, how does this reactor weigh up when contrasted with a pioneering ITER reactor? The development that is being done to create a nuclear fusion reactor that is either capable of producing copious amounts of renewable energy or can emulate the sun's processes has advanced further. Fusion has long been regarded as a kind of holy grail by the scientific community. If it were to be effectively utilized, it might become a source of nuclear energy that is both clean and safe to use. Atoms are brought together via the process of fusion rather than split apart, as is the case with nuclear fission reactors. As a result, there is no production of harmful radioactive waste. In a device, researchers from the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics in Germany powered up an experimental reactor and created hydrogen plasma. The Wendelstein 7X Stellarator is the name of this particular piece of equipment. The Stellarator is designed to contain plasma that has been created by slamming together hydrogen atoms and then pounding them with microwaves until the temperature of the matter exceeds 100 million degrees Celsius. The point at which the nuclei of the particles combine to generate helium is called the fusion point. The whole procedure creates energy and mirrors the activity that takes place in the center of the sun. The center of the stellarator, which is in the shape of a donut, functions in essence as a little star. Late in 2015, the apparatus premiered at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, where it was shown that it could maintain a loop of helium ions at a temperature of 1 million degrees for one-tenth of a second in situ. The temperature of the plasma that the helium ions were racing through reached a blistering 40 million degrees Kelvin, four times hotter than in the trials that followed, when an additional 18 times as much energy was put into the W7X. As a point of comparison, the sun's surface only gets up to an average temperature of 5,505 degrees Celsius. Do you comprehend the staggering potential of this stellarator yet? Fusion energy is formed when atoms are fused together, in contrast to conversional nuclear energy which is generated by the fragmentation of massive particles. While most of us are acquainted with traditional nuclear energy which produces power, this is the most probable future power source because it does not create the same radiation problems as atom splitting power. Fusion is the most environmentally friendly method of producing energy, with the exception of the radioactive tiles that line the internal walls of the reactor. We have no choice except to give them a powerful kick with something in the neighborhood of 100 million different degrees of kicking, requiring specialized equipment. W7X is among the two varieties of these that are currently showing promise, which can be found here. The electromagnetic fields that were produced by the ensuing plasma are used by devices such as the Alcatraz C-Mod Tokamak at MIT to assist in maintaining order among the squirming gelatinous ring of charged particles. This furious motion-based swirling cloud of particles is necessary for the fuel injection process, as it produces an immense quantity of energy. Nevertheless, it is afflicted by instabilities that enable power production to be a brief affair due to the nature of the situation. Meanwhile, stellarators like the W7X employ thousands of magnetic coils to confine the plasma, providing them with more control and enabling the hot ring of helium jello to circulate for extended periods. W7X's 15-meter-wide machine looks to have been demonstrated 
as a technique to bridge that gap, despite the fact that it does not quite mirror the performance of the tokamak. Another piece of technology that is seen as having the potential to bring in a new age of nuclear fusion power is the ITER nuclear reactor. ITER is the first gigantic machine of its type in the world, and it is now being constructed at Cataract, France, which is a scientific research facility in France that specializes in the study of nuclear power. By fusing together two distinct forms of hydrogen, known as deuterium and tritium, the device would provide a power output of 500 megawatts, which is equivalent to producing 10 times the amount of energy that is needed for it to function. ITER will be a whole new category of nuclear fusion apparatus when it is finally constructed. This will have a diameter of 100 feet and a height of 100 feet. When the reactor and the first plasma are finished being produced in late 2025, it will be the biggest magnetic confinement plasma physics experiment in the world. Additionally, it will be the biggest experimental tokamak nuclear fusion reactor. A stellarator operates very similarly to a tokamak, employing enormous superconducting magnets to sustain hydrogen plasma and heat it to the pressures and temperatures necessary to fuse the material into helium. Additionally, the Wendelstein 7X stellarator is constructed of about 50 superconducting magnet coils ranging in height from 3.5 to 4 meters. The plasma in the stellarator is locked in a twisting and swirling configuration, as opposed to the torus or donut formation seen in a tokamak. An arrangement similar to a transformer causes the ions and electrons contained inside the tokamak to move in the manner of an electric current as it circles a tube. This current generates a magnetic field that is vertically looping, and when joined with the area already traversing the tube's entire length, it provides the requisite spiraling field lines. On the other hand, the tokamak is capable of holding plasma to a greater degree than the other technology. This is due to the symmetry of a tokamak that makes it possible for particles to travel routes with less friction. It is not uncommon for significant numbers of microparticles to get misplaced in stellarators as a direct result of the high volume of wiggles and ripples that they are exposed to. Since the 1970s, this has been the driving force for the great majority of fusion research, which culminated in the enormous ITER reactor project. The inside wall of the Wendelstein 7X has been upgraded to include graphite tiles, which has made it possible to reach greater temperatures. This interior liner, known as a diverter, safeguards the swirling chamber walls while also enabling the operators to pump more plasma at higher temperatures. This provides the operators with more management over the hydrogen plasma's density as well as its purity. The Wendelstein 7 Accelerator has been improved in order to demonstrate that it is possible to construct power plants that use fusion reactors of the Stellarator type. It took an enormous amount of theoretical and computational work to build the magnetic field which maintains the heated plasma confined and distant from the vessel's edges. This was done in order to address the shortcomings of earlier accelerators. One of the most important goals was to reduce the amount of energy that the plasma lost as a result of the ripple in the magnetic fields. Plasma particles, although linked to the magnetic field lines, drift outwards and are therefore lost due to this phenomenon. Tokamaks, on the other hand, have shallow losses as a result of the ripple in the magnetic field due to their symmetrical construction. The energy losses in this area are affected by instability, which is also integrated as a lost channel, as well as by tiny vortex movements in the plasma. In light of this, one of the primary goals of stellarator optimization should be to reduce neoclassical losses. This will allow the stellarator to catch up to the excellent confinement qualities of the tokamak. Because of this, the magnetic field of Wendelstein 7X was specifically designed to cut down on such losses. Using the heating equipment that has been made accessible up to this point, Wendelstein 7X has already been successfully producing plasmas at high temperatures and has established a new stellarator world record for the production of fusion products at high temperatures. This particular combination of temperature, plasma density, and power confinement time demonstrates how close you can get to the parameters for a plasma that is burning. Now that such a large plasma has been analyzed, the process has been carried out in great detail. 
At these high plasma temperatures, turbulent losses were insignificant. Nevertheless, neoclassical losses contributed to 30% of the heating power, rendering them a substantial contribution to the energy balance. Now, with the use of a thought experiment, the impact of Fendelstein 7X neoclassical optimization has been proven. It was predicted that the same plasma levels and profiles that contributed to the record performance in Wendelstein 7X would also be reached in plants that had a magnetic field that was less well optimized. After then, the expected neoclassical losses were estimated, which brought in a distinct outcome. It is physically impossible for them to be higher than the initial heating power since it will be more than that. This indicates that the plasma pattern seen in Wendelstein 7X can only be created within the constraints of minimal neoclassical loss magnetic fields. On the other hand, the reverse is also true. The reduction in neoclassical losses was effectively achieved by modifying the Wendelstein magnetic field. On the other hand, Tokamak suffered from several serious drawbacks. In a commercial fusion reactor, the ability of a transformer to push a current across the plasma only exists in the form of short pulses, which is inadequate. It is possible for the current in the plasma to fail, which may cause disruptions suddenly. Disruptions are characterized by sudden losses of plasma containment and have the potential to subject the reactor to magnetic forces that are powerful enough to cause damage. Even more recent designs like the spherical tokamak are affected by these kinds of problems. Stellarators, in contrast, do not fall within this category because no plasma current is flowing. The fields created by the external coils do not require any pulsing. Given these two criteria, several teams have maintained their commitment to the notion. Because the reactor does not create heat by breaking atoms in a regulated nuclear reaction, the electricity that it generates is practically free of any harmful byproducts. Even while the Wendelstein 7X would not generate energy independently, it will ultimately be utilized to develop a stellarator reactor that can operate endlessly. This will bring us one step closer to a future in which practically unlimited energy is produced by the exact mechanism that powers the sun. Please share with us in the comments section below your thoughts on the nuclear reactor and what you think of it in the future. Of course, you should also think about subscribing to our channel, Technology Zone, and ring that notification bell for the updates on our future videos.